Hi, Paolo. Let's take a look at this new set of essays you've uh, got for us. Okay, so the bar chart above displays sales from Ford, Audi, and BMW vehicles. Careful with your spelling. In some European country, all right, how many? Don't just tell me some, but tell me the number of European countries, okay? In 2018, overall, Ford is the most popular brand, followed by BMW and Audi, respectively. Hungary has by far the highest figure of vehicle sales, while Italy and Belgium have the lowest market in absolute numbers, okay? Uh, nearly 4,000 cars, 400, let me try that again. Nearly 400,000 cars, without the of, were sold in Hungary in 2018, with around one-third, um, mm, with around one-third, uh, for each brand. I, I know what you're trying to say here. I, basically, you're trying to say that, um, all the brands were distributed equally or sales for, okay, but we just have to rephrase it because this is a little awkward. Um, let me see if I can come up with something that works. So nearly 400,000 cars were sold in Hungary in 2014. Um, equally distributed among the three brands. Okay, that's one way you could have said it, which also kind of sounds nice. Um, okay, with almost 100,000 fewer, careful, vehicles sold, France showed a slight, not a slightly, that's an adverb, you want an adjective, a slight preference for BMW, um, and Ford and Audi tied in second, okay. Germany, Ireland, and Holland had similar numbers at around 280,000. In Germany, the number of Ford sales was insignificant, and Audi and BMW sold nearly 100,000 cars each. In Holland, sold, Ford sold, without that S, more, followed by BMW and Audi. In Poland, BMW and Audi shared similar numbers at around 90,000 units, while Ford sales were around 30,000. Get rid of this at. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Six, seven. Weren't there nine? I thought there were nine countries, but maybe there was not. Okay. Uh, the UK sold 100,000 Ford, 90,000 BMW, and only 10,000 Audi. Around 110,000 vehicles were sold in Italy. Um, no, with the vast majority of BMW. Uh, that's awkward too. No, the vast majority being BMW and a small percentage Ford and Audi. Finally, Belgium sold just under 100,000 cars with a prevalent figure of Ford and small numbers of Audi and BMW. Okay, so you've actually done a really good job here. I was concerned throughout the task that you had missed a country. I finally found it. Um, it was just kind of hiding over here. Um, that's something you definitely don't want to happen. You absolutely have to make sure you mention all the countries because, as you know, those are your key features. It's, it's the categories. So you have to mention them at least once by name. You did that, so that was good. Um, I like the way you organized it. That was, um, it was well done. I haven't seen it done like this. And I thought you did a nice job. Just to tell you how most people divide, um, do this and how they divide it, just so you have another idea if something like this should come up again. Um, a lot of people spend one paragraph just talking about the, the, the totals for each country. And then they spend a paragraph kind of analyzing the, um, the different car figures uh, for the countries. And that can be done. Uh, believe me, it can be done. It just requires some grouping. So you say that like XYZ country had between 100 and 150,000 sales of this car. So that can be done. But what you did worked. I mean, it was fine. So I don't have an issue with it. Uh, you just kept spelling vehicle wrong, which was um, a little distracting, but nothing, nothing major. All right, good work. Let's take a look at your task two. So let's see what you've done now in your task two. This is the one about pollution. So let's see what you said. Experts throughout both the developed and developing countries, get rid of the. So let's try that again. Experts throughout both developed and developing countries have debated the problems related to pollution for the last decades. All right, there's something about this that seems strange to me. For the last decades, uh, mm, 
let me think about this for a second, have debated problems um, for decades. Honestly, that would make sense to me rather than for the last. So just for decades uh, works and feels far more natural. So this essay will argue that the burning of fossil fuels is the main cause of the mentioned problem and pub a public awareness campaign is the most viable solution using examples from Harvard University and the German government to demonstrate points and proof arguments. Okay, fine. Let's, uh, let's move on. The abuse of use the abuse of use. I have to put a like a note on that. So the abuse of use of fossil fuels, how much is the overuse or the excessive use? Those are um, more appropriate words here that um, fit this context better. So the excessive use of fossil fuels, such as coal and oil, is the primary cause for the alarming rates of pollution, especially in the air. It is largely Ca uh, this is largely because millions of cars powered by petrol in the largest cities of the globe emit tons of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which is extremely harmful for air quality. As a result, there have been seen, hmm, how about there have been numerous cases of respiratory problems such as asthma and lung cancer. To illustrate a recent study by Harvard University has shown that there are more lung cancer cases related to air pollution than to smoking. Okay, don't forget, you might want to just add like a final takeaway there for it is clear that um, our love affair with uh, the automobile is um, partially responsible for pollution, okay? Let's see. A public awareness campaign explaining that fossil fuels can make Earth soon become, with an O, inhospitable could encourage people to ban vehicles and start to circulate by bicycle or on foot. Bicycle and vehicle are both spelled wrong. This measure would be effective to reduce air pollution and the related health diseases due to the fact that cars emissions, the cars here, the car's emissions are the main cause of this problem. For example, the German government has reduced dramatically, no, has dramatically reduced the percentage of cars, cars per, in, mm, per inhabitant, all right, singular, in Berlin, through a massive public awareness campaign, careful with your spelling, persuading people to use bicycles instead of cars. In conclusion, I maintain that the excessive use of fossil fuels is the primary reason uh, for the absurd levels of pollution, especially in the air, and a public and awareness campaign is the most viable solution to tackle this problem. Uh, viable solution. All right, you said it in the beginning, you said it at the end. It's a lovely expression. I really liked it when I saw it in your introduction, but if you use it more than once because it really sticks out as something that's kind of advanced, um, it... Um, you know, you want to avoid using it more than once in, in a particular essay. Okay, so let me tell you what my concern is about this essay. The essay prompt, you didn't include it here, um, but I did look it up just to make sure how it was um, phrased. It asks for the reasons and solutions. So um, what they're telling us here is that they want, they want to see more than one reason and more than one solution. Unfortunately, you only provided one of each. And so um, an examiner is going to look at that and say, no, you've only partially answered the question. We wanted solutions. We wanted reasons. So you've got to be really careful about the language that you see um, in the prompt. Make sure you really follow it to, to the letter. Um, here in, you know, even here you said the main cause is this and the solution is this. And then here it was just about fossil fuels. And then here it was just about the public awareness campaign. So it was really evident. I mean, it was well structured. All of that was great, but, um, you're not answering the question. They asked for reasons, plural and solutions, plural. And so that of course, like I said, is going to, um, lower your score for task achievement. Okay. So definitely, definitely, definitely make sure that you read the question as carefully as humanly possible. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, so I know you've got that whole pack, um, ahead of you to work on. So definitely make sure as you're going through the pack to really pay close attention to the way the questions are phrased. All right. I'll wait for another set from you. I'm here. So, um, good luck with it. And, uh, I'll wait to see what you write next.